Now this video is not about Octopus Intelligent. This video is about the problems that can happen if you sign up to Octopus Intelligent. Now this will be going through some problems with certain charge brands, also problems with solar, and if you're using the Cars API, well, there's a big story on that one. And if you've got a home storage battery unit, you definitely want to watch this video. Now I have a full video explaining what Octopus Intelligent is coming up, so I'm not gonna explain the tariff, but I'll quickly give a brief overview. You get five hours of cheap off-peak electric, and then the rest on peak. Now occasionally when you plug your car in, Octopus will allocate extra additional hours on top of the five hours. And those five hours might not be when your car charges at all. It could charge completely at different hours. This is one of the problems that people are getting confused with because they'll see the car maybe start charging at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., which is their normal peak hours, and they'll manually stop the charging or even their charger or the car. And this is against Octopus T's and C's because if they've allocated extra hours, it's because the grid needs that energy being sold off or Octopus have bought that energy extremely cheap during those hours. So let the car charge and Octopus will credit you back the difference between the peak and off peak on your bill and not just for the car, they also credit you for the extra energy in those extra hours that your whole house has used. So don't stop the charge because you're only costing yourself money. Now, if you're not already an Octopus customer, check out evnick.com forward slash energy, where there's a code to split £100 with me if you sign up to Octopus Energy. Now, these extra hours allocated on Intelligent have a easy way of seeing when they've been allocated via the Octopus app. If you go on the Octopus app and your car's connected by the API, you'll tell it what time you wanted to charge by, 9 a.m., uh, 8 a.m., and then you say what percentage charge you want, and it will show you the hours that your car will charge. So you can see these extra hours, so you could possibly load shift your extra usage to those extra hours. Now, the a Cars API does have a problem which we're gonna discuss in a minute for the video, but the reason I talked about showing it in the app is because some chargers at the moment don't tell you when those extra hours are. Now, I've always been a huge fan of Omi. Their charger and their app and the way they used to work with Agile, for me, was always one of the most intuitive, best systems going, especially the fact that they also integrated with a lot of cars APIs way before this uh, Octopus Intelligent existed. Uh, Octopus were very, very, very quick on the ball on this. So when I found out that Octopus Intelligent and Omi Omi doesn't tell you the extra hours intelligence is going to charge. Now this causes loads of problems for load shifting, but also for battery customers, which we'll get back to in a minute. Now I found this very annoying because you couldn't do extra load shifting. So I told Omi direct my extreme disappointment in this. And to my surprise, they agreed and they said that they're going to fix it. Now they said that it will take around about four weeks, but they'll display some kind of push notification on the app to tell you when those extra hours are coming. Now they're not gonna be the only company that are gonna suffer with dealing with Octopus Intelligent, and that is because Octopus Intelligent is about to hit two chargers that do solar. And those two chargers, I've been reliably informed, will next will be Indra and My Energy. Now, if you are charging your house, uh, charging your car by solar energy, you're probably aware that before your charge goes into sort of a pause mode, it will wait 30 seconds. So clouds have come over, you're not generating enough solar to charge the car, it can't ramp down any further, so it needs to go into pause mode. Now to go into pause mode takes 30 seconds, and that is to stop the cars having faults, because if you're frequently stopping and starting charging, based on the clouds, you can cause the cars to go into a fault mode. So this 30 second means that for 30 seconds, every time the clouds come over, you're going to draw from the grid a couple of kilowatts during peak demand. Now this isn't Octopus Intelligence fault and it's not the fault of the charger or your solar or your inverter. It's just the way solar chargers work to stop errors on the car. But it could mean that you could be drawing a couple of kilowatts every single day at peak times from the grid and be charged at peak times. Now, how these companies will tell you and display this information is yet to be seen, but hopefully they inform customers who are charging by solar that this is possible and that the amounts are fairly, in, you know, very small and very tiny, so not to worry about them too much. Now, it gets worse if you're an API charging car with solar. Now, the real issue is battery customers, and we'll come back to the API customers because their problem won't start just yet. And that is because 
battery customers are going to have a real good time with this tariff or a real bad time with this tariff. And that's because Octopus off-peak starts at half 11 and ends at 5.30 a.m. Now, typically battery customers would pick these cheap off-peak hours to charge their battery, which is great, cheap energy. However, Octopus have now decided that they're gonna all allocate you some extra cheap green hours. And those cheap green hours are gonna start at half five till eight o'clock. This means now that your house battery has fully distrained into your car battery, meaning you've now got an empty car battery, a full car battery, but an empty house battery. And this means that you've lost money because those round trip efficiencies mean that your battery isn't 100% efficient. So you've lost money, you could have charged on off peak energy for your car, you could have kept the battery reserved at full, but you didn't because you didn't know these extra hours were allocated or the extra hours of allocating your battery is not intelligent to work this out and you've got an empty battery. Now as a battery customer, you'll probably either want to charge the battery during these extra slots because it will make you more money and discharge more during peak times and charge more during off peak times. Or you might want to go into pause mode. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this and one of them is using API access to the charger and the app and at the moment, uh, charge firms don't really like giving API access, complicated security issues around that, and uh, battery inverter firms also don't like giving API access to a lot of their systems for write access. So we've got two problems there where we need the two to sort of interact with each other, or even Octopus to publish through their API when these extra times have been allocated to you. Hopefully, one of those or both those solutions will come and you can integrate with either your direct API or using a workaround like Home Assistant. Now, this might bring up the possibility that buying an inverter and, you know, home, home storage battery and EV charger from the same family of companies might make your life more easy, as in they'll all talk to each other with intelligent, they understand when intelligent is, and they'll all go into pause or start mode depending on when it is. However, if these companies have agreed to be on Octopus Intelligent with Octopus, they would have agreed not to let that home battery charge up during those extra hours. It will only go to pause mode. So that is one thing to consider depending on what side of the board you're on. Do you want it? Are you happy with it just being on pause? Or would you like to benefit from those extra hours? And if you're in the same family, it might not let you do it. Octopus allow API access via the cars to do Octopus Intelligent. Now this is useful if you haven't got a working charger that works with Octopus Intelligent. If you've got a working API car, give access to the API to Octopus and they'll stop and start the charge on Intelligent for you automatically based by their app. It seems great, however, a couple of charger firms have raised concerns that it won't meet future ISO and PAS requirements under mandated legislation and law, and I'm gonna list those PAS and ISO numbers down below because I think a healthy debate is needed around them. But in essence, a, a charger firm that makes chargers doesn't think it's compliant, what a surprise there. Um, now put it to Octopus, and they agree that some of the points that these charger firms have raised are valid points, but some of them, they reckon they can get round with certain technologies. However, these technologies and these methods don't exist yet so we are theorizing on what's possible and in my personal opinion I'd rather have the charger be in control of the Octopus Intelligence sessions than the car's APIs because if the car manufacturer decides not to allow API access from external sources like Octopus because it's costing them too much money latency ping issues then they will or that the Kia issue Kia saw their 12 volt batteries get drained by Octopus constantly interrogating the API, that caused the 12 volt battery to drain. Now Octopus have got around this by changing how often they interrogate the car, but these issues by a manufacturer, they could just say, well, we'll just stop the API access, problems fixed. And that is the long-term issues there because if you've got your charger doing it, it's a pretty much safe bet that the charger will carry on doing it and it gives the Octopus and the charging company data that allows the charging company to stay viable for long periods of time. Now, a sensible debate, like I said, is needed about this. Now, if you're thinking of joining Octopus Intelligent, check out 
uh, this video here with all the octopus tariffs and if you're thinking about getting home storage units then check out this video here all about home storage batteries